Hey, Steve, come here. Here's the thing. There's a pool with sharks behind this door? I promise they won't kill you. You have my word. Come on, get in. Wait, you got it wrong. Well, I'll have to show it myself. In the 1970s, several U.S. Navy nuclear submarines in open waters got strange damages. Their sonar domes went out of order, and the huge vessels were simply blinded. The submarines had to return to base for costly repairs. The military was shocked. Seemed like they were attacked by an invisible enemy with an unknown weapon. None of the submarines could detect it, and yet the sonars were out of order. How is this even possible? When inspecting the equipment, people found strange marks. It was as if someone with small teeth tore out a part of the sonar sheath. A very durable one that could withstand the colossal underwater pressure, but couldn't handle an unknown weapon? Roughly 10 years later, about 30 more submarines were damaged. And again, they found these strange marks which looked like tiny teeth. In 1991, underwater cables in the Gulf of Mexico were damaged. These are not like the cables we're used to seeing on land. They are incredibly durable, and their sheath is difficult to cut or pierce even with the sharpest knife. We need that so that animals colliding with cables wouldn't leave us without the blessings of civilization. And yet someone managed to bite them through. No, seriously. Just look at these holes. It's as if an invisible monster with the strongest jaws on the planet and saw-like teeth lurks somewhere underwater. And he simply hates cables, submarines, and everything that people lower to the bottom of the ocean. Who's that Pokemon? Meet the cookie cutter shark. It lives in warm waters, does not look very attractive, and feeds by biting pieces from its prey right on the go. I'm not kidding. Its mouth is surrounded by suctorial lips, thanks to which this shark, damn, it's weird to call such a small creature a shark when it hardly reaches 19.6 inches in length. Anyway, thanks to these suctorial lips, the shark attaches itself to the prey and puts its teeth to work. The upper ones look quite ordinary, but the lower ones are interlocked and look like a saw. Can you already guess why? Yeah, this creepy fish literally cuts out a piece of meat, leaving behind a wound about 2.8 inches deep and 2 inches across. This depends, of course, on the size of the shark and its prey, but the fact remains, after taking a bite, the cookie-cutter shark instantly swims away as if nothing had happened. No wonder submariners didn't even realize someone was approaching their submarines. The fish picks up speed very quickly, and the entire feeding process can take only a few seconds. But this wasn't what surprised me the most. The cookie-cutter shark eats everything. That is literally everything. Dolphins, stingrays, tuna fish, smaller fish, squids, accidentally caught seals, as well as other sharks and even whales. Orcas? Yummy! The great white shark that terrifies the entire ocean? They'll have it as a snack between lunch and dinner. Apex predators can't do anything against these little creatures. Well, what can you do when they're so fast, plus they often hunt in groups? And yes, a human who ended up on the territory of cookie-cutter sharks will also have a hard time. There have been recorded cases of these sharks attacking humans using the same hunting technique. Of course, losing a chunk of yourself is not the most pleasant feeling, but on the other hand, these sharks will never eat you whole. Just bite off a little from the side. Here's proof they're not so dangerous. Do you see now? Well, let's go for a swim. But these sharks aren't that easy to spot. Not only because of their speed, although it certainly is a factor, take a closer look. They seem pretty weird, right? Especially this dark collar which wraps around tightly. The front side looks very small and the back side looks large. The thing is that the back side glows. Moreover, it is quite bright and the purpose of this glowing is to confuse the prey. I'll explain how it works now. More often than not, the potential lunch of a cookie-cutter shark swims somewhere below. Looking up, the prey sees the sky through the water. It's quite easy to pick out dark silhouettes against a light background, but if a part of the shark glows, the prey will mistake a small head for an entire fish. Did I mention cookie-cutter sharks hunt in groups? So some fish, like tuna, look up and see a whole school of small fish. Nice, thinks the tuna. I'm about to have a snack. It can't even imagine it will be the one to become a snack. And very quickly. You didn't see that coming? But why the hell are cookie-cutter sharks attacking submarines? I mean, it's pretty hard to mistake this giant thing for a whale, for example. Well, that might be when you know the exact differences between the two, but in the ocean, everything looks a bit different, and these fish are ready to hunt literally anything. And they don't really care how delicious their lunch looks. Even cables are good enough for them. Listen, Steve, these whales are kind of coarse, aren't they? Just keep chewing. 
And it's not just small sharks that mistake whales for submarines. People also get confused during the World Wars. Until advanced sonars were invented, the military often mistook giant mammals for enemy vessels. There are even declassified documents that describe the differences between marine creatures and submarines in detail, with illustrations. Everything looks simple enough. The submarine moves less smoothly and leaves oil slicks behind, but when you observe from the air, you may not notice such details. The whale mistaken for a submarine was doomed. However, from the military point of view, it was much worse to mistake the submarine for a whale and let it get away. Good thing today, people don't have such problems. We even learned how to keep our submarines safe from cookie-cutter sharks by installing a fiberglass shield over the usual sonar sheathing. It cost quite a lot, though. Since we're talking about warships, it's hard to find the exact figures, but just think about it. On one hand, we have a giant nuclear submarine, a miracle of engineering, a vessel capable of reaching the bottom of the ocean and eliminating the most dangerous targets. On the other hand, a fish that barely grows to 1.6 feet long. And this fish can bite through it easily. Of course, sea creatures have been at war with humans for a long time. The story of our confrontation probably begins at the time when humanity first ventured into the water. And I'm not talking about isolated cases of attacks on some fishermen. Huge creatures have sunk entire ships. You've probably heard at least a couple of legends, but some of them are true. On November 20th, 1820, in the Pacific Ocean, a huge sperm whale rammed the whaler Essex and sank it. This news shocked the whaling world so much, it inspired Herman Melville to write the novel Moby Dick. And you know, actually one can understand this sperm whale. Few would like to be hunted, and it was not difficult to sink the ship. According to the information I found, Essex was an old ship driven by sail. No wonder the sperm whale managed to break through its nose like through an eggshell. When your wooden ship is being attacked by something very angry, weighing 50 tons, there's no need to guess what would happen. About 30 years later, another ship, an Alexander, was rammed and sunk by a sperm whale. It was also a wooden ship with whalers on board. The whales don't seem to like being poked with harpoons. And what about the attacks of giant squids? This is a classic sailor horror story. Not that far from what really happened once. I mean, it's unlikely people ever shared the ocean with the Kraken from Pirates of the Caribbean. But this does not stop the giant squids from attacking ships. It's believed that the French ship Ville de Paris sank in 1782 as a result of such an attack. However, it was quite a long time ago. People could embellish the events. In 1874, the Pearl ship was sunk by a huge squid or octopus. Witnesses described its tentacles as thick as wood. Hopefully not like a baobab. In 2003, a squid latched onto a yacht. Thankfully, as soon as the captain stopped the boat, the monster immediately lost interest in it. You know, when I was a kid, I always thought the most dangerous creatures in the ocean were giant man-eating sharks. You know the movie Jaws and all that? Turns out you should actually be afraid of sperm whales, huge squids, aggressive octopuses, and cookie-cutter sharks. If you're in a submarine, of course. But big classic sharks are also threatening people right now. Yes, as long as you sit and watch this video, you're in danger. Sharks are very curious animals that also know a lot about hunting. When tracking down their prey, they often navigate using electromagnetic fields. And you know what can confuse them? Underwater internet cable. An inexperienced shark will easily mistake it for potential prey. Well, if it doesn't want to eat a cable, it'll be happy to check what sort of thing it is. Remember when I mentioned animals who bite stuff to learn more about it? So if your internet suddenly goes haywire, don't get mad at your provider. Perhaps a shark is chewing on a cable right now. See you later.